In recent years, mobile app development has changed in a pretty fundamental way. You no longer need to be technical to build one. After no-code tools like Flutterflow came the rise of AI tools like Claude Code and OpenAI's Codex. Fast forward into 2026 and a lot of non-technical people trying to get their app off the ground are still tinkering with browser-based platforms like Lovable and Base44. But there's a growing understanding now, especially from mobile apps, that these platforms are kind of shit. Not because they don't work per se, but because they don't actually give you more control than CLI tools like Claude Code or Codex. All they really offer is that feeling of accessibility. And once you realize that, it becomes pretty obvious why people don't stick with them for that long, which is probably why we're starting to see big usage drops in these platforms. Either way, it leads to the same conclusion. The best way to build mobile apps right now, technical or not, is with CLI tools like Codex and Cloud Code. And that means that everyone, coders and non-coders alike, now have to get comfortable with the terminal. See what I did there with the video title? Let's talk about the terminal. If you run Microsoft Windows, you'll use a built-in Windows feature called WSL. With Mac, it'll just work right there in the dock or type terminal into Spotlight. By the way, I run Ubuntu Linux, so my desktop looks different, but your terminal will work exactly the same as mine. And actually the Windows WSL feature really is an embedded Ubuntu Linux terminal, so same, same. The terminal is just a quicker, cleaner, low-level interface for your machine. Same as if you were navigating around in Finder, you're going to have a location. If I'm currently in a folder called code and I want to change the directory that I'm in to go into a folder called terminal, CD for change directory space, and then I start typing terminal. Thing is, I can actually hit tab and it will just autocomplete. Now if I print working directory, I'm going to be inside of code slash terminal. A period represents the current working directory. So if I change directory into the current working directory, I'll stay in the same place. Two periods sends me back. So if I change directory into the current working directory, previous working directory, I'll go back into code. This simple pattern is still worth learning because if I were to go into Claude code right now, for one thing, I'd have to prompt it, change the current working directory into the terminal directory inside the code folder. I mean, sure, you could prompt the AI to do this, but then it has to ponder for a while and then it'll implement the command. Then it'll do some cleaning up and it'll finally get there. This would be a ridiculous time sink just for the sake of not learning how to type CD space into a terminal. Hopefully you get the message here. You don't actually need to learn the syntax. The AI can teach it to you. But outsourcing all of these commands to the AI agent would be a completely insane waste of time. Now, crucially, the terminal is capable of tasks that your desktop GUI isn't able to do. And there is literally nothing that your GUI can do that the terminal can't. When we're talking specifically about programming and mobile app development, a really good example of this is installable CLI tools for different services. One example of this is Supabase. Superbase is a CLI tool that I have installed with NPM. If I hit enter, it will actually produce a manual of different options that this tool can do. Generally, CLI tools will have two ways of working. One will just be through ordinary commands. I can type super tab and then the command like start. If I run this, it will pick up whatever's happening in the current folder, see if there's a Superbase folder in there. And what this command has now done is it's actually spun up a real Superbase studio and a real database on my local machine that I can access from a browser on localhost. The other thing to note with CLI tools is flags, and these are represented by hyphens. There are generally long form flags, which go by two hyphens and full words. So if I type Superbase version, it'll give me the version of this CLI tool. So I can type dash dash version, or I can type dash V. If I do one dash, it usually just means an abbreviation. It's the same command. If you don't know what commands are available, you can type dash dash help. And here you can see that you can either use dash V or dash dash version, and that'll give you the version for the Superbase CLI. You can also invoke software. So if I want to use anti-gravity, I can type anti, hit tab, but I want to open anti-gravity pointing at my current folder. So I'll use a period. And then when I hit enter, it'll literally open the anti-gravity IDE. Most IDEs and certainly VS Code forks like anti-gravity and cursor also have an embedded terminal. It's personal preference whether you want to use this terminal, 
But I actually like to put an independent terminal window into a different screen on my desktop. That just helps me with organization. After you've got the hang of this, it's good to at least know that the terminal can do anything. You can make a directory with mkdir, you can remove a file with orm, you can rename a file or move a file around with mv, you can list the directory contents with ls, you can talk to the internet with commands like curl and wget. These commands are Unix commands and they date back all the way to the 70s. These are commands that your AI agent is running with. It's what the AI agent is using to make edits to your code base. And you should definitely have a look at what the AI agent is doing while it's running. Like for an example here, it's just using a simple ls command with some flags. Here it's running a Python command. There it's running sleep. Here it's hitting uvcorn. Remember, the AI agent can teach you anything that you need to know about the terminal. But there are some things that are just faster to do in the long term. If you learn a couple of the basic commands yourself and get some level of comfort and familiarity with the terminal environment. Once you've been using the terminal for a couple of days, you'll start to see how control gets taken away from you when you use things like web-based AI builders. CLI tools give you everything, but the AI agents take care of the details and complexity and implementation. So all you have to do is get familiar enough with the terminal environment so that you can empower the AI agent to do its job without becoming hopelessly reliant on the agent itself. It's best to do simple things like running CLI commands and navigating through your directories yourself, just as you would if you were like double clicking icons in a GUI window, except the terminal is far faster than using a mouse and it can do much, much more. Let me know in the comments whether you think using the terminal like this still matters in the age of AI agents and if you're trying to get your mobile app idea off the ground, but you feel stuck, check out the link in the description. Subscribe for more AI mobile app building content, and I'll see you in the next one.